here at Western and Capital in San Pedro at the parking lot outside Ralph's supermarket. We have a very bad situation here, I'm afraid. The police have cordoned off an area. There's been a carjacking. We have two victims laying on the ground. Two boys, both Japanese, apparently from Marymount College, just up the hill from this supermarket, have been shot execution style in the back of the head. They've been taken by ambulance to Harbor General Hospital. We don't know much else right now. The carjacker took their white 1994 Honda Civic. We don't have a license plate number yet. As soon as we have it, we'll give it to you. A little else is known at this point, Jesse. The parking lot has been cordoned off. People are milling about, but the police have roped off the area. As far as we know, they're still alive. This is uh, Ron Armino reporting from San Pedro. Back to you again, Jesse. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. In other news tonight, President Clinton again suggests that we mothers reached out and touched the hands of their sons and they were still warm and you could still see that their chests were coming up and down because they were breathing with the help of ventilators and the mothers just couldn't believe that something could be done that if they went to another hospital or had no other doctors or if they were transported back to Japan they could somehow have their life saved and I noticed uh, all kind of people down there and um I was wondering what happened, and then somebody told me that uh, two Marymount students had been uh, shot. I kind of stood around, and then more and more people were coming, and they were putting flowers up. Kids were crying, and they were all very, very upset with what had happened. I was thinking, God, life is so short. Uh, you never know what's going to happen. I remember hearing about it, and it was just complete shock. What happened? Why them? was what crossed my mind. And knowing them the way I did, friendly, so kind and so honest and, and um, wouldn't hurt a fly. Here these two kids come across the ocean to get an education in our country and some animal takes their lives. Later in the afternoon when I'd heard of what had happened or in the evening, uh, on my way home, I went down to Western, went by the, what had become an instant shrine, flowers, candles, and found myself, like everyone else, simply weeping. People were just standing there in disbelief. And someone says to me, you know, I, stu I was student body president at the time, why don't you say a few words? And I don't know what I said, but anger is what I felt. The moment that I remember best was the... Uh, memorial service in the chapel after the parents had arrived here and it was when the parents arrived here that it really hit me. Uh, in the chapel we walked up along the side aisles uh, and to pay our respects up at the altar and then when we came down from the altar in the um, center aisle the parents were standing there and one of the fathers and I don't remember whether it was Mr. Ito or Mr. Matsura, but he fell around my neck and put his head on my shoulder <clears throat> and sobbed and cried. And of course I cried. He wouldn't let me go. And we just stood there. And I, that was a very heavy moment. Do you know, I remember the parents remarking on this and they came on campus that they looked out and, and from this thousand foot elevation, you could see Catalina Island, you could see the ocean there below us, and it seemed so idyllic, so peaceful, so calm, so supportive of their sons and supportive of everyone in this community. And yet we had to try to combine that with the reality of the violence in American society as well. And it's just a tremendous contrast, the kind of things that takes place on a college campus, the support that we give to students, the appreciation of nature, the appreciation of the peace and beauty and harmony of the world around us. And that really is the tragedy of what happened to these two young men.